Hello guys, welcome to Inside Electronics. So in today's episode, let's take a look at a simple yet old LED bulb that I found in my attic. Now this one is actually a much older model because you know nowadays almost all LED bulbs available in the market looks like this one with the diffuser on top and also the LEDs inside will be something like that old surface mount LEDs with surface mount components everywhere but back in the early days before these kind of LED bulbs were so much popular this was the kind of bulbs that you can actually buy from shops there are there were so many bulbs that were that was looking like this of course they were made by Philips Cisco, uh, Siemens and not Siemens I mean uh, you know branded manufacturers like that and during those times a CFL bulb like this one was much cheaper option than an LED bulb so people were actually buying C more CFL bulbs rather than buying going on for going for a LED bulb but comparing these two these kind of bulbs act are really good because they have this beautiful diffuse diffusing element on top so if I plug this one in and I'm going to plug that you can see the kind of light that this thing is producing of course it is picking up the flicker so if I turn this on you can clearly see you can clearly see the amount of uh, light that it is producing it's creating a nice even effect on my table right here see that it's creating a really nice even effect that's because of the diffuser so even if I take out the diffusion element from there it is still producing a kind of even light that is because of the wide emit emitting angle of this these kind of LEDs these kind of LEDs have a much wider emitting angle and that's what the advantage of these kind of bulbs let me adjust the exposure and because of all those features these are specially designed so that the light is light coming out of it is co uh, covering the entire area so it gives out even light like this one but that was not the case with bulbs like this one actually these were homemade bulbs you know a lot of small scale industries people that don't even have any idea about electronics there were people who are just getting paid for what they are doing per day so they just give them the components they just tell them what to do just do that solder that that's it boom they don't actually it is not necessary that they have to know what they were doing because all they were doing is just what they are instructed to do so if I plug this one in and turn this light off see this one is creating much like a spotlight effect see and the surrounding light you are just seeing right here is because of the light that I have up above me so if I turn that light off you can actually see a hot spot over here with just a little bit of light going out like that so that was the major difference between and those crackling and popping you are hearing like see those cracking and popping sound that can actually be heard much more if I plug this one in Ooh, you just seen an accident going on live because I was about to plug this in and this thing went bang like seriously see I just by touching that I managed to take that out that is how the quality is so if I keep doing that you can clearly hear some cracking and popping ha happening that is because this bulb is messing up my power factor so let's bring back our thing so let's take it apart without further ado let's take this thing apart I did count this one it appears to be 30 LEDs and there is one thing that I forgot to show you guys if I plug this in back again I turn it on and if I adjust the exposure down you can now clearly see that among the 30 LEDs that one right there one LED is not lighting up you can kind of see that one right there that is not lighting up okay but you may think that it is because everything is connected in parallel otherwise that single LED that uh, 140 LED will result in the entire light to be just disconnected but that is not the case that's because let's I'm going to take the top cover off and that's it it is really simple arrangement it's a capacity dropper but before that 
uh, I have to discharge it, but I'm seeing a discharge resistor across it anyways, but still, let's not take any chances. Okay, I just got to, before making this video, I was making a video about a DVD player, which I shall link up there, and I just got shocked from that, and oof, this thing really hold a charge, man. So the arrangement is very uh, common. It is a capacity dropper and the capacitor they were using is 334. So it's 334 picofarads. Uh, how much volts is that? 250 volts rated capacitor. And it is accompanied by a fusible, like a discharge resistor right there. So it's a uh, right there and then after that comes the bridge rectifier the circuit looks ugly and blue uh, and the the uh, flex was all there they didn't even bother to actually take that away anyways that's okay for this video let's see what brand capacitor is that it is a uh, what what that is is that I don't know what is that but anyways that's a 250 volts 10 microfarad capacitor it has a couple of resistors probably that one is across the uh, what's happening with my camera okay it was actually me my focus was on manuals that was causing the issue so uh, we have the four rectifier diodes and this capacitor has got its own discharge resistor it's a 470k ohm resistor connected across this capacitor that's a good thing and that's a 1 mega ohm across that one and this is a 680 ohms resistor connected in series with the uh, LEDs so 3 times 30 is 90 so 90 volts will be across the LED and the rest of the voltage will be across the uh, capacitor right there let's actually measure the voltage so I'm going to take my meter I will be back in a moment so guys I have now connected my multimeter across the uh, LED bulbs and let's turn on and see how much voltage is across the LEDs so that is as expected around 93 point something it's actually 92 point 92 volts let's say so the rest of the volts will be dropped across the uh, it still has the voltage left in so just wait until that goes out and I just heard a popping sound I don't know what is happening but anyways let's measure the voltage across the uh, let me just pause and I'll be back. So now I have connected the multimeter across the capacitor and let's see how much voltage is dropped across that. Around 200 and 200 volts. That's not true because here in India it's around 230 volts. So something is really messing up with my meter right there. It's a really crappy meter anyway so but anyways you got the point 90 volts across it so 230 volts minus 90 volts gives 140 volts dropped across that resistor right there so that's good now I, let me see if I can measure the current across it I'm going to pause again and I'll be back so now I have connected the meter across one LED so let's try to measure the current that is flowing through the circuit so I'm just going to plug this in and hope you can see the meter right there how to turn this off to actually bring that into vicinity otherwise I may short something out hope you can see that so I'm going to turn that on I'm going to light up this one and I'm going to short circuit an LED right there so it is showing around 15 milliamps so that is really reasonable 15 milliamps going through an LED is just nothing because you're actually uh, not running the LED at its full 
potential right there so that's really a good thing to this LED is going to last really long time if it is run if it's being run at such low currents so the, and basically that is the reason why this thing does not need any huge heat sinking or anything because the uh, current drop is going to be tiny but there is one huge disadvantage right here that I can see because the, of the way that this thing actually gets back in chances of that being shorted out to there is huge that is one thing that we have to be very careful so I have to find something to actually keep that in there before putting it back together but anyways that's it thanks for watching see you in another video